good evening. Welcome again to Song of the Word, where you get the message in the song. We are here again to just lift up the name of Jesus, and we are happy to present Bishop Oponda today as our guest speaker. Amen. So we want to thank you for joining us. As you're coming in, please share as we get ready to have Bishop Oponda join us. Amen. Thank you for joining those of you who are listening, those of you who are quietly watching. Welcome, welcome to Song of the Word. It's a girl highly favored Blake, and we thank you for being here. Amen. The song today is Lord You Know, Lord You See, and our speaker, of course, is Bishop Oponda, out of Kenya. So we trust that you incline your heart to be blessed by the word that will be coming to you today. Amen. I'm just going to play the video um, for the song, Lord You Know, as we get ready to have him join us. Yes, 
welcome, welcome everyone. Thanks again for joining us. Thank you for being here. It is Song and the Word. We get the message in the song. The track is called Lord You Know, Lord You See. And um, you can trust Him to order your steps because He knows your end before your beginning. You can trust the all seen eye, the one never slumber nor sleep, to lead you, to direct you. Amen. Glory to God. I want to say welcome again. It's um, your girl, Hattie Favorite Blake. Singing songwriter out of Toronto. If you're new to the program today, we want to thank you for joining us. And we want to invite you to like and share, subscribe to the YouTube page if you're on YouTube. So welcome everyone. Thank you for joining us. Um, the song is Lord You Know, Lord You See. The speaker today is Bishop Opondo. He's coming out of Kenya to join us. And we're looking forward to the work that God has given upon his heart. I want to also invite you to join me on Mondays on the Enrichment Gospel Hour. Monday at 9 a.m. Jamaica time and 10 a.m. Eastern. Um, let me just um, play that so you can get a bit of what to do here. It's a time of spiritual enrichment. Yes, tune into the Enrichment Gospel Hour every Monday at 9 a.m. Eastern with highly favored Blake as we strive to enrich your life through music, prayer, and the inspired Word of God. We also have live interviews with gospel ministers as they share their ministry. Tune into Roots 96.1 FM and Roots FM on YouTube and Facebook. Contact us at enrichmentgospel at gmail.com to promote your church events, businesses, and services. Tune in and be blessed. Yes, indeed. Welcome, welcome, everyone. Thank you for joining us. Listeners to you, hon. God bless you. Welcome. Those of you who are quiet, listen, we want to welcome you today to the enrichment, not to the enrichment gospel, or to song of the word. <laughs> Amen. You get the message within the song. Amen. So welcome, welcome, everyone. Um, we're just um, going to play that song again while we get ready to have the word. Um, I want to invite you to, to add Alice with Blake to your Spotify, iTunes, Apple, wherever it is sold. You can download, stream any of the songs that you hear on this platform. We want to also invite you to, to save the date on your calendar because coming up next month um, it is Nurses Week as well as it's Mother's Day. So we celebrate our mothers and we're going to be having some special programs coming up in the month of May. So keep it locked and bear these in mind. I want to invite you if you're a gospel minister um, to join us on um, Sing My Artist Friend song. We're going to be having that coming up as well shortly. So um, reach out to me if you want to be a part of that as well. So I want to thank you all for joining us. The track is called Lord You Know, Lord You See. He knows all. He's the all-knowing God. You're missing one. He sees all. Glory to God. He's the omnipresent um, God. He's everywhere. He's here, there, and everywhere. So you are never alone. You are never left without a comfort zone because he has gone away but he's promised that he will leave us the Holy Spirit the comfort zone amen and we want to thank God for thinking about us amen and that he knows all that concerns us and he cares and he understands amen so I trust that um, this song will give you comfort that you can trust him that you can depend on him you can rely on him amen to order your steps amen glory to God blessings to you sister Sharice God bless you sis thank you for coming in as you're coming in, remember, continue to share and invite a friend. And we have Bishop Apondo, wake up his apart from his bedtime. He's up, it's after 11 over there in Kenya. But he's here, um, committed to sharing a word from the Lord with us this afternoon. So I want to thank you for coming in and um, we we'll make him welcome to share his word today. Amen. It's a blessing and a privilege to be able to share the word of God. Amen. Because the harvest is truly ripe and the laborers are few. I trust that this word will encourage you if you're already, amen, say, will we'll, um, lift you up if you're down, amen, because, you know, we go through things at times and we um, get despondent, but the word from the Bible, amen, that the Lord leaves for us, it is, it is food for our soul, it is comfort, it is everything that we desire to keep us um, on this Christian journey, so I trust that the word coming to today will bless your heart. Blessings to you, Pastor Matthew YK out there in Liberia. God bless you. Thank you for joining us as well. Amen. We want to thank you all for being here on the Summon Word program. If it's your first time again, we say welcome. Amen. I want to play the song for you one more time as we get ready to welcome the man of God of the hour um, today. Amen. The track is called Lord You Know, Lord You See. Amen. We trust that we continue to ask the Lord to order our steps, to guide our feet. 
because we cannot walk unless he holds our hand. So we're trusting in that he continues to guide us. Amen. Glory to God. trust him? Will you trust the one who holds the world in his hand? Will you trust him, the one who creates the heaven and the earth? Will you trust him, the one who sets the planets in orbit? Will you trust him, the one who made you and I? Amen. The one who broke free from the grave and is now alive at his father's right hand. Will you trust him? I trust you will trust him today, amen, to order your steps, to guide your feet, to take you through this pilgrim's journey. Amen. Welcome, everyone. Thank you for joining us. Welcome to Sister Tidra Bennett. God bless you. Sister Therese, God bless you. 
God bless you, Sister LaFleur Duncan. Good to have you. God bless you. Welcome, welcome, everyone. Those of you who are quietly watching, those of you, amen, on Facebook, YouTube, thank you for joining us. Amen. It's a blessing and a pleasure to be here one more time to do what I can for the Lord. Amen. Our speaker, of course, is Pastor Bishop Richard Opondo. Amen. And he's already here. Amen. So we're going to get ready to make him welcome right after this. Amen. It is song in the word where you get the message in the song. So welcome, welcome everyone. Thanks again for being here. Amen. Welcome to H Favored One Song and Word Ministry with your host, singer-songwriter, highly favored Blake, where you get the dynamic and compromising word from the message in the songs. Tune in every Thursday at 4.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time on Facebook and YouTube. Tap your feet to the sweet gospel beat and incline your hearts to be blessed by the inspired word of God from our anointed international ministers. Subscribe and follow for our theme shows throughout the year. Don't forget to like and share. Yes, indeed. Please do follow, like, and share. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Welcome everyone again. Thank you for joining us. At this time, I take pleasure in welcoming a man of God who is very much on fire for the Lord, who's very passionate about the things of God. Amen. It was a pleasure to have met him, and it's a pleasure to have him on this platform. Amen. To share with us. And so we take pleasure in making welcome at this time, Bishop Opondo. Welcome, Bishop Opondo. Welcome, welcome, man of God. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Praise the Lord. I'm not my hearing sister. you. Oh, you're not hearing me. Let's get you closer. Ah. Okay. Not hearing oh, your okay. audio, Praise your volume. Um, let me see here. It's me. My volume. Okay. okay, now I'm hearing you. Okay, welcome, okay. welcome. Are you welcome. getting me now? Yes. Um, okay. do you have any more lights? Thank you're you. quite dark in there. <laughs> Uh, the light is not so much good, but mm. uh, we will continue. It is Amen. a little bit dim, yeah. but we will continue. Uh, praise yeah, I know the Lord. it's almost midnight there. <laughs> so, yeah, okay. it is midnight. Welcome, it is welcome. 10, 10 minutes to midnight. Yes. How is Canada? <laughs> oh, it's getting better for the weather. A um, little bit of rain today, but good, good. <laughs> mm. We're out of the cold now. <laughs> Oh, there's a lot of cold. No, we're out oh, yeah. of the cold now. It's more rainy oh, yeah. now. Yeah. Oh, it is raining. Yes. Okay, okay, okay. We thank God we are also getting some rain. Mm -hmm. And in fact, it is raining so much. Today, I am privileged again to come to you from Uganda. And oh. in fact, uh, I, just, I am just surprised. The first time we did the program on uh, highly favored uh, radio, it was in Kampala, Uganda. I had a right. mission in Kampala, Uganda. Again, today we are doing a program when I am in another town known as Mbale in Uganda. We have wow. been here for one week now. We are doing ministry. We are doing a seminar, a conference on evangelism. Mm -hmm. We are being trained how to evangelize on the streets. And I am believing God that one day I will be coming to Canada to evangelize on the streets Amen. of Canada. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Thank you for having me. I am so grateful for this wonderful opportunity <clears throat> and the grace. Although I have some flu, but uh, God will help me to speak the word. Uh, thank you for giving me this opportunity. I want to begin by passing my greetings to all our families and our friends on highly favored black uh, station, radio station, wherever you are in America, in Canada, in Africa, Asia, and everywhere. May God bless you so much. I love you in the love of God. I want also to remember our CCB family uh, from Caribbean, uh, Maryland, America, with Pastor Gilbert, Pastor G, and Lady G and all the CCB family, God bless you so much. I believe you are listening. I want also to pass my greetings to positive vibration. I have seen the message of our sister, Tedra Bennett, the young lady that is passionate for the gospel. I uh, receive my greetings for my daughter and my sister, 
I love you so much. I see Shara is there. Thank you, thank you, thank you, my, my sister. I want also to say hi to Radical Praise, uh, DJ Apathe and Radical Praise family. You are great people. And also I want to pass my greetings to Sister Is, wherever they are, and Mama Thomas, Evangelist Thomas, great people in the gospel and the kingdom. I thank God he has given me so many friends outside yeah. there, uh, people like Barbara Johnson, we love you so much. I've started mastering you slowly by slowly. The Lord is connecting us. Thank you so much, my sister. Uh, I believe that God is uh, taking you higher and higher. And thank you for giving me this opportunity so that I can share the word of God on this wonderful platform that is being watched worldwide and globally. I am so grateful. So before I begin <laughs> sharing the word of God, just allow me to pray so that we can give God the first priority in whatever thing we are going to do. Uh, our Heavenly Father, King of Glory, Jehovah Yahweh, Daddy, I want to thank you because, Lord, indeed, you are a good God. There's none like you, King of Glory. We thank you for this wonderful opportunity to share your word in this generation to the nations of the world, O King of Glory. Thank you for giving me favor to be a, an instrument, O King of Glory, and opening people's minds and people's hearts and people's uh, eyes, O dear Lord, to locate me down here in Africa so that, Father God, I can share your word. I don't take it for granted. I avail myself unto you, Lord. Use me as a vessel. As I share your word, the King of glory, let somebody be encouraged. Somebody, Father God, be raised to higher levels, and somebody understand your will and your love in their lives. Father God, just as you promised, that whenever we shall share the word, signs and wonders shall accompany us. So whoever is listening to this word, O King of glory, even those who, shall be, who will be listening later, I pray that let your word come out with the power, with the healing. Holy Spirit of Jehovah God, take over and lead us to higher levels, O oh dear Lord. I cover my sister Black with your blood, uh, Richard Orlando, Orlando's brother God. Uh, I cover them by the blood of Jesus. Make them, Father God, to blossom and King of glory, use them for the glory of your name. Thank you for everybody, dear Lord, that have made this uh, broadcast to be, uh, to be, to be possible to go over King of Glory. I pray that bless the machines, bless the phones and every gadget that you are using, the internet and every person that is behind every machine, bless them and do them good. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray amen. and believe. Amen and amen. amen. Uh, welcome my sister, welcome once more. How long should I take? <laughs> uh, about 45 minutes. 45 minutes. That 45 minutes uh, least, uh, yeah. Okay, that is good. 45 minutes, that is good. So today I am grateful that once more we are in a song and word ministry. And in fact, it is word ministry brought in two different ways of portraying the word of God. Because songs is one way of portraying the word of God and then preaching is also another way altogether but the goal is one and I want to thank God for my sister uh, highly favored in fact the way you, uh, you compose your songs is purely the grace of God and the revelation from above because you sing songs that are, educa uh, that, that are educating that are revealing the secret of God in people's lives, praise the Lord so I want to believe that anybody who listens to these songs, they, are, they must in, inspire him or her, teach him or her, guide him or her, and lead him or her to the right path. Because all these ways are ways of serving God. And the goal of God is to bring mankind to himself. And today we are dealing or we are looking at this song that our sister highly favored called it trusting uh, the Lord, trusting the Lord. The song that is known as uh, trusting the Lord. So in this song that he says, trusting the Lord or oh Lord, you know, and you see. I want to believe that is a song that is showing us 
God's expectation to man. The Bible says that when God created man, he loved man. In fact, the Bible tells us that before God created man, there was a meeting in heaven among the Godhead. And they said among themselves, let us create man in our own image. So God created man for fellowship. And for this fellowship to be healthy, man was supposed to depend on God, to love God, to trust God. Because God has got feelings, he wants man to trust him wholeheartedly. He wants man to love him wholeheartedly. He wants man to walk with him in that fellowship and that relationship. And that is why he made it possible for man to be in Eden. And because he wanted to test the sincerity of this man and the capability of loving God despite the challenges, he brought about the Garden of Eden and the forbidden fruit. Praise the Lord, somebody. But unfortunately, men fell in that category. And God, because he created man with a lot of love and care, he started to look for avenues to bring back the human race. And we see how he uses different avenues to show people that he is a good God. And the story begins by redemption of man, by slaughtering the first animal, and giving man something to cover his or her their nakedness. And thereafter, God starts to reveal himself to people. And strongly, he reveals himself to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Then after he has revealed himself to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, he raises the children of Israel as the nation that will be a nation that he will really, uh, portray himself so that people can know him. Unfortunately, even after revealing himself to Israel, again, the Israelites did not trust him fully. And that one made God to be sad, made God to have a broken heart. But altogether, God continued to make sure that he helps man to understand. Let us read a scripture. In the book of Jeremiah, in the midst of all this, when God has, have, had revealed himself to Israel through Moses and the law, the miracles, the, the redemption from, from the land of slavery, Egypt, the Red Sea, the Jordan River, and all those things, the inheritance of the land of promise, and all those things. Unfortunately, these people never trusted God fully. And that is why when God is sending Jeremiah as the prophet, theologically we know him as the weeping prophet. When the weeping prophet went to Israel, he was showing Israel the mind and the heart of God. And today I have chosen to read in the book of Jeremiah, chapter 17, verse 7 and 8. This is what God is telling the people of Israel through his servant or his prophet Jeremiah. The Bible says, blessed is the man who trusts in the Lord and whose hope is in the Lord. For he shall be like a tree planted by the waters, which spreads out its roots by the river, and will not fear when heat comes, but it is, it is leaf will be green and will not be anxious in the year of drought, nor will uh, cease from yielding fruit. Praise the Lord, somebody. Uh, I just uh, greeted my friends. I have just remembered I greeted my friends from outside there and I forgot to greet my friends who are following me inside Kenya and Africa, my daughters and my sons, wherever you are. I just want to encourage you that God loves you and you are going to be blessed. If you are following, you can, uh, you can drop a comment so that we know that you are together with us. Welcome and welcome. So God is telling Israel, because when God now is sending Jeremiah, he's sending Jeremiah when Israel is in torment, when Israel is in problem, when Israel thinks are not working for them, and they are wondering, where is this God? Why are we suffering? Why is it like this? Now Jeremiah is coming to reveal to them that blessed is the man whose trust is in the law. It means that God is trying to tell these guys, you are suffering because you don't trust me, God. You, Israel, 
The reason why you are suffering, it is because you have not trusted your God. You have not trusted your God. And then he says, for he shall be like a tree planted by the waters, which spreads out its root by the river and will not fear when heat comes. God is trying to tell these guys that you see what? If you trust me, God, I control weather, I control everything. Even when heat comes, when drought comes, there's no problem. So long as you trust me, it doesn't matter what will happen. Whether it will be winter, whether it will be which season, whether drought will come, there's nothing that can change my love on you, and there's nothing that I cannot handle. So long as you trust in me, you will be safe, like a tree that is planted beside the rivers. And it has uh, spread its roots to the water. So when all other places are dry, this tree does not experience any drought because it has got a source that is different from others. Because all other trees depend on the, on, the, on the rain. So when the rains are not raining, then they must wither and dry away. But this particular one, it does not uh, depend on rain. Because it has got a hidden secret of source of water. You see? And then he continued to say, but B, and will not fear when heat comes, but it is leaf will be green and will not be an, uh, uh, an anxious in the year of drought, nor will cease from yielding fruit. Jesus, is, uh, God is trying to tell Israel, it doesn't matter what will come to happen. It doesn't matter the season. It doesn't matter the year. It doesn't matter anything that will happen. One thing that we know, God is telling Israel that if you trust me, I will bless you. I will do everything possible to make sure that I sustain you. I bless you. I supply all your needs. And I was looking at this word trust. This word trust. I was trying to look at it critically to understand what is it about trusting God? What does God mean when he speaks that those who trust him? What is trusting God? And I came to realize trusting first of all means you have confidence in somebody or something. You have confidence. You rely on that thing. Just as a farmer relies on the rain. Unless you have some other ways of irrigation, no, no, normal farmers rely on rain. Without rain, there's nothing they can do about it. You see? You rely on it and you are confident. You depend upon it. You depend upon. You just depend upon. You see? Just as in the normal life, we depend on the issue of breathing. Everybody knows that we depend on oxygen. Whenever we want to be alive, there must be some oxygen somewhere for us to breathe in so that we can be alive. And everybody scientifically knows that when, that when there is no oxygen, you cannot survive. So depending means you know that is the, the only provision, that is the only source, and that is the only way out. You don't have another option. You don't have another option. So people must come to a place of knowing that God is their only option. There's no other option. And for you to depend on God, it means you must come to a place of having knowledge, being sure without reasonable doubt that God, God is all present. God is all present. He's there every time. There's no single time or single day or single minute that he will leave you nor forsake you. You must believe that beyond reasonable doubt. Number two, you must be sure that God is all-knowing. He knows everything. He sees everything. He understands everything. So nothing happens without him, without his knowledge. And that is why Jesus said that even the birds of the air, none can fall down without the knowledge of God. And Jesus told us something very unique, that even the very hair of our heads, Jesus knows how many we are having. I have never heard any book or anybody's talking about how many heirs 
air we have on, on our heads. I've never had any scholar going for that because it is something that is not easy to count and understand. So Jesus chose to use the hardest example, that which men do not understand, that God knows everything. And then you must come to um, a, a level whereby you can understand beyond reasonable doubt that God is all-powerful. There's no any other power or any other being that is greater than God. And that is why the Bible says that it is God who raised Pharaoh so that he can again bring him down for the Israelites to know. Because Pharaoh was raised to the level to be like God. And even Pharaoh himself understood he was the strongest man, the most powerful man. That is why when, uh, when Moses came and told him that God has sent me to tell you that let my people go and worship him. Pharaoh only laughed at Moses and asked Moses, who is God? Because Pharaoh knew and everybody else knew that Pharaoh was the most powerful man or powerful being in the world. You can see people like Nebuchadnezzar. It is God who raises them to bring them to that level so that the time he deals with them, somebody will know there is a man somewhere. There is a being somewhere that is so strong and so powerful. It is God who created the giants in the land of, uh, in the land of Canaan. It is God who created Goliath in the land of Canaan. He is God who brought David to bring down Goliath so that people can know that even the strongest men like Goliath, there is some power that God can use his people. And he does not use mighty men of the world, but mighty men of the Lord to bring such like people down. So that Israel can know that God is all-powerful. God is all-knowing. God is all-present. He made them to pass through the wilderness so that they can know that God can provide even water and food in the wilderness. He made them to pass through the Jordan River and the Red Sea so that they can know that God can make a way where there is no way. The only problem that men do not learn easily and that is why when you read the Gospels, Jesus came, performed so many miracles, but after performing so many miracles, very few people trusted and believed in Jesus. And the Bible says, he was marveled at them. He was marveled at them. You see, because these people, the problem with we men, we can speak that we trust God or we love God. But when some other challenges come, we tend to think that God cannot help us. We run to other places. We run to other sources. We run to other uh, ways of solving our problems and challenges. And that one annoys God. I believe, my listener, you can remember the story of this guy, Saul, the, Saul, the first king of Israel. The Bible says when everything was good, he killed the witches of the land. He ordered the witches to be slaughtered. He never, he never, he never, he never uh, uh, allowed any witch to survive in the land of, of Israel. But you know what? When he came to a place whereby his relationship with God had shaken, and now he did not see the hand of God because he ran away from the presence of God and started doing some funny things. What does the Bible say? He disguised himself, put on some uh, funny clothes, and went to seek for one which, uh, which was spared. You see? So the trust in God was gone. So men, most of the time, we only tend to trust God when everything else is good. But when things are not working for us, we forget that there is a God who helps people. So that one offends God. We have offended God so many times, so many times of men when we don't trust God. And the reason why so many people do not trust God, we have not believed in our hearts beyond reason and without doubt that God is all present. It doesn't matter, matter where you are and what you are passing through. Be it at night, be it in the daytime, be it in the valley, be it in the high mountains, be it in the war zone and every other place. God is all present. And also we have not come to realize that God is all powerful. It doesn't matter what will come our way. What, uh, any power that can come our way, God is all powerful. And that is why Paul says, in the book of Romans chapter number 8, that I am convinced 
beyond doubt that there is no power, there's nothing that can separate me from the love of God. And he starts to count things to the, to the level of counting principalities and powers in the heavenly realms. That if, even if there be some powers in the heavenly realms which are not from God, they cannot separate us from the love of God. If we only love God, there's nothing that can happen. So coming to that level of uh, believing in God totally, that is the way where the problem is. And now we have been told in Jeremiah that if you come to that level of trusting in God totally, it doesn't matter what will happen. God will continue to provide. God will continue to protect. And God will continue to have fellowship with you. And it is very much interesting, the last part, that and will not be anxious in the year of drought, which means in this world, things will happen. Challenges will come. Drought will come. Every other challenge will continue to come. But you will never be anxious. You will be confident. Regardless what happens. When Goliath comes, you will be confident. When drought comes, you will be confident. When sickness comes, you will be confident. When brothers uh, forsake you, you will be confident. You see, trusting God to that level becomes a challenge, even to the believers. Even to the believers. I've seen with my own eyes, people who have said they cannot go to witches. But when sicknesses come, and sometimes they persist, I have seen Christians going to witch, to witch doctors and doing those uh, funny things because their faith failed somewhere. And that is why finally he says, nor will cease from yielding fruit. The benefit of trusting in God is that you won't cease from yielding fruit. God called us so that we can yield fruit. So the reason why our life is barren is because we have not trusted God fully. So we must come to a place as a church of trusting in God fully. And that is why I think this song and this particular message is so very much important today. That every listener, wherever you are, my brother, my sister, be it a servant of God, be it a, just a, a member of the church, be it somebody who has not known Christ, it is good to understand that God loves us and he gave his begotten son so that whoever believes in him shall not perish, but shall have eternal life. And by having eternal life, I want to assure you that our God and our Savior will make you to yield the fruit in every season of your life. The fruit of the kingdom of God, not just any other fruit, the fruit of the kingdom of God. Because our life, we are here to serve God, to do the will of God, to yield the fruit of the kingdom. And we can never yield the fruit of the kingdom unless we trust God. Let me look in the book of 2 Kings, chapter number 18. I want to show you this guy who is known as King Ezekiah. King Ezekiah, as I was looking in this scripture, I was just uh, amazed by how King Ezekiah ruled Israel. Because in Israel, we know after the fall of Solomon, the kingdoms were divided. And they were two kingdoms. And in these two kingdoms, there came so many kings. In these two kingdoms, there came so many kings. And the Bible says, some were wicked. Some were good kings. Some trusted God, and some trusted in the bands, and so on and so forth. But let us look in Second Kings, chapter number 18, right away from verse 1. And we see the story of this great man, uh, the king uh, of uh, the, the king uh, who is known King Hezekiah, chapter eighteen, verse one. The Bible says uh, that is Second King, chapter eighteen, verse one. Uh, the headline in Hezekiah's reign in Judah. As this guy was reigning in Judah, after the split of the kingdom of Israel, they were split into two. I believe that one we know. Now Hezekiah becomes the king of Judah, and this is what happened. Now, um, now it came to pass in the third year of Hosea, 
the son of Ella, king of Israel, that Hezekiah, the son of Ahaz, king of Judah, began to reign. He was 25 years. I love this guy. He begins ruling or reigning when he's just a young man, 25 years of age, when he became king. And he reigned 29 years in Jerusalem. His mother's name was Abi, the daughter of Zechariah. And he did what was right in the sight of the Lord, according uh, to all that his father David had done. So I want you to see something here. The Bible is very much interesting that in the very first introduction, we are told that Hezekiah is the son. You see, verse 1 says, Hezekiah, verse 2 says, verse 1 says, Hezekiah is the son of Ahaz. By birth, he was the son of Ahaz. But in doing good, in doing good, verse 3 tells us, now he becomes the son of father David. This means from David to Hezekiah, all the guys that ruled in between did not trust God. They trusted in their own things. So when God is looking this genealogy, he sees David and Hezekiah as son and, and father. He ignores other people in between. You see? Because when you trust God, there's a position that God gives you. When you don't trust God, God despises you. Despises you. So Hezekiah does good in the sight of God by trusting God. And the Bible calls him the son of David. He did according to his father David. Because David is called a man after God's own heart. He walked rightfully in the house of the Lord. He trusted God no matter what happened. Even at the time he sinned, he ran unto God. He was given a choice sometime, but he chose to follow before God. You see? And he says, it is you and you alone that I have sinned against. He understood God. He loved God. He served God. I see a king of Israel, the great nation, the king of kings, who is dancing for the Lord. Today we are having pastors who cannot dance for the Lord. Church elders, just a mere church elder who cannot dance for the Lord. They are too big to dance for the Lord. But here we see a king who's dancing for the Lord, passionate for the Lord. He loved the Lord wholeheartedly. And the Bible continues to say in verse number four, he removed the high places and broke the, uh, the sacred pillars, cut down the wooden image and broke in pieces the bronze serpent that Moses had made. For until those days, the children of Israel burned incense to it and called it uh, Nakshatan. So you see, when David came, he ruled Israel in the fear of the Lord. He raised the altar for God. He brought the covenant, the, 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 the ark of God. He prepared to build the house of God, which Solomon built. The only God that was worshipped in Israel during David's days, this was the God of Israel, the creator of heaven and earth. But after the death of David, we see there comes Solomon, whom the Bible says he married foreign women. And these women came with their gods. And the Israelites from there started believing in, in other gods to the level that the kings now that took over after the death of Solomon, they started raising altars for the Baals and other gods, which means they never trusted God. God was there in their lips, but in their heart there was no God. They believed in other things that they thought could help them. And because of that, God was grieved. Now when this young man Hezekiah comes, the Bible says, he brought down all those altars and brought Israel back to the true worship. 
that was there in the days of David. And that is why God overlooks all the kings that were there between and identifies this young man, Ezekiah, as the son of David. Because he is the one who brought back the true worship in Israel. And one funny thing is that even the bronze snake that Moses had made, these guys started to see it as a god to sacrifice and give uh, uh, offer incense for this bronze snake. This guy, when he saw that these guys are turning this snake into an idol and worshipping it, he destroyed it so that people can remain with one God, the creator of heaven and earth. And verse 5, the Bible says, this is the core verse, he trusted in the Lord God of Israel so that after him, was none like him among all the kings of Judah, nor who were before him. That is why I chose to talk about Hezekiah. The Bible is telling us that he trusted God with all his heart. That after Hezekiah, there's no any other king who trusted God like Hezekiah. And even after Hezekiah. So you can know that trusting God is something that is so much difficult. Because all the kings of Israel and Judah, they talked about God. They told the people about God. I believe they understood that it is God who put them in those offices. Because I believe they were anointed by the prophets. All of them were anointed by the prophets. Because during those days, there's no way a king would be anointed in an office of leadership without involving a prophet. Prophets were involved. Priests were involved to call on the name of the Lord, to pour oil on them, to dedicate them for that task. And all that have been, having been said and done, they continue to talk about God, but trusted in other things. My brother and my sister who are here hearing me, can we come to a place of knowing and trusting God fully, seeking to know God to the level that we can trust him fully, just as Ezekiah trusted him, for us to prosper, for us to live a good life, a life that has got a relationship with God. I just wonder, let me repeat verse number five. It caught my attention so much, because this is what the Bible says. We are reading 2 Kings chapter 18. We began from verse 1. Now we are in verse uh, 5. Let me repeat. He trusted in the Lord God of Israel, so that after him was none like him among all the kings of Judah, nor who were before him. He stands alone to be unique. He did the right thing. What was it? To trust in God with all his heart. And then what happened? Chapter 6. For he held fast, he held fast the Lord. He did not depart from following him, but kept his commandments, which the Lord had commanded Moses. You see? So the difference between Hezekiah and all these other kings is that in his reigning, in his leadership, he sought the, the commandment of God. He read it, understood it, and lived by it. And that is what trusting in God means. And that is why every time I speak, I always tell people, that when Jesus finished his work, he spoke the last words. We call them the Great Commission. In the book of Matthew, chapter number 28, verse number 19 and 20, the Bible says that Jesus called the disciples and told them, go into the whole world, preach the gospel to every creature. Whoever is, believes and, shall, and is baptized shall be saved, and whoever does not shall be condemned. And verse 20 is very interesting. That teach them to observe all that I have commanded you. And lo, I shall be with you. In Pentecostal churches, I think we have got it wrong. That when we want to have God, or when we want to have Jesus, we pray so much and call him. Jesus, come. We need you. Come. Come. Mm -mm. Jesus said, Whenever people are taught the truth, 
He will just come there automatically. We don't need to invite him. That is why he said somewhere that whenever there are two people or three gathered together in my name, I will be there. And that is why after resurrection, he had told these guys that I will be buried and the third day I will resurrect. And after my resurrection, I will meet you. I will meet you in the city. Not at the gravesite. But when these guys heard that Jesus had resurrected, they ran to the tomb. They did not understand or trust the words of Jesus. They ran to the tomb. And that is why Jesus revealed himself to Mary Magdalene and told her, go and tell my brothers to wait in me. Where I told them, I will surely come. And the Bible says, while they were together in the house, locked in the house because of fear of the Pharisees and the other groups, Jesus appeared to them. And that is why I always tell people that today we are not in the business of seeking God. We are in the business of doing the will of God. Because if we do the will of God, he will automatically show up. But if we don't do the will of God, it doesn't matter how much we will seek. It doesn't matter how much we will pray. It doesn't matter how much we will do what. Nothing will happen. He will not show up. And that is why the Bible says in verse number 6, For he held fast to the Lord. He did not depart from following him, but kept his commandments, which the Lord had commanded Moses. And you can remember in the book of, Je in the book of Joshua, when God commissioned Joshua, in Joshua chapter 1, verse 6 to 9, what does the Lord tell, 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 tell Joshua? That be strong and courageous and make sure that you follow to the letter all the laws, all the commandments that my servant Moses have just taught you and you will prosper wherever you go. So the word of God remains the same. That after God has given his word, trusting in the Lord means doing according to his will doing according to his word. When you do what the word of God says, you prove to God that you trust in him. No matter what happens, you stick to the word of God. I think that is where we are getting it wrong. Let us see verse 7 and 8. Uh, this is what the Bible says. The Lord was with him. You see, after trusting God with all his heart and doing according to the will, the will of God, verse 7 says, the Lord was with him. He prospered wherever he went, and he, uh, he rebelled against the king of Assyria and did not serve him. When you see how God sent Israel into the land of Canaan, he told Israel to root out every other kingdom, every other kings. But these other kings, they departed from God. And they were ruled by these other kingdoms. They were subject to those other kingdoms. When Hezekiah came, he said, no, I cannot be a subject to another kingdom. Because the only kingdom I know is the kingdom of God. The kingdom of my father. The kingdom of God who is almighty. So any other kingdom, I have to rebel against it. I want to urge you, my brother and my sister, whatever you are listening to. If there be any other kingdom that is ruling your life, kingdom of sin, kingdom of fear, kingdom of wickedness, kingdom of witchcraft, kingdom of drunkenness, kingdom of fornication and adultery, any other kingdom that is ruling you, you must purpose to rebel against it if you want to trust God. And I will be talking about the last thing in my few minutes to come, before I conclude. Because today we are living in a materialistic world. So many people are ruled by money. And Jesus knew it. And he said, you cannot serve two masters. And you know what? The second master was not the devil. The second master was money. So today there are people who are under the kingdom of money. Every decision they make, it depends whether they will get something out of it or not. You see? The kingdom of finance, materialistic world, that's another kingdom altogether. So if you go by that kingdom, if you are ruled by that kingdom, you must rebel against it. I love this, the, the word of God. Verse 7, let me repeat. The Lord was with him. He prospered wherever he went. 
and he rebelled against the king of Assyria and did not serve him. Verse 8, he subdued the Philistines as, for, uh, as far as Gaza and it is territory from Watchtower to fortified city. You remember the Philistines? These are the same people, the clan of Goliath, the people who tormented Israel in the days of David. And when David brought down Goliath, the Philistines subjected under Israel. After the death of David, it seems, and it is clear here, that the Philistines again started ruling over Israel. So God allowed the Philistines to rule over Israel because Israel subjected itself or herself to other kingdoms, other gods, and other things. They forgot about their God. And because of that, the Philistines started ruling them again. You see? And that is why when this guy obeyed God, he was given the power. He was given the power to rule over the Philistines. Oh, God is helping me to understand. There are very many things that are ruling us. It is because we have rebelled against God. When we rebel against God, other, other small, small kingdoms, we rule us. We remember the story of the street of Ai in the days of, uh, in the days of Joshua. Ai was despised in the eyes of Israel. That is a small city. They will just walk over it. But when they went to that city, they were humiliated. And after that, Joshua came and tried, cried to God, Father, why have you ashamed me? God told Joshua, wake up. There's a problem in the, in the camp. And when they dealt with the problem, which was a, a child, what happened? They just handled the eye in a very simple way. So the Philistines ruled over Israel because Israel rebelled against God. Things can rule over us because we have, we have rebelled against God. So my sister and everybody listening to me from wherever you are, the secret of living a successful life in the Lord is obedience. Obedience. Obedience to the word of God. And how does obedience come? Obedience begins by hearing the word of God. Obedience is like faith. Another word for obedience is faith. And that is why Paul says faith comes by hearing and hearing of the word of God. So there must be a true doctrine that is taught to the church and to the people. And the listeners must be doers of the word of God. That is what brings success. That is what I am learning here. And uh, that is why if you look in the book of Job, everybody knows the story of Job. But let us just uh, read a small portion in the book of Job chapter 13. The book of Job chapter 13, there's something interesting here that I want to share with us. Chapter 13, verse uh, 15 and 16, only two verses. The book of Job chapter 13, verse 15 and 16 says uh, that uh, this, uh, this is the man of God, Job, talking. He's answering uh, his critic uh, criticizers after his friends trying to think that Job is the worst sinner. That is why he's passing through what he's passing through. So Job, because he had a relationship with God, he had knowledge of God, he was a love of God. There's something Job is, is saying here by answering his friends. Verse 15, he says, Though he slay me, yet will I trust him. Even so, I will defend my own ways before him. Job is saying that even if God is the one slaying him, he has got no any other option. No other, no, 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 no other option. He will continue to trust God even if he comes to a place of understanding that the challenges, the mess, the pain, the loss that he has gone through, it is God who has caused it. He will never be bitter with God because there's no any other option to Job. Job had one and the only option, trusting in God. So it doesn't matter if he is the one tormenting him. I was looking at this statement and this, uh, this example came in my, in my mind. When you go somewhere, 
very far away by a plane. You have traveled somewhere by a plane. And uh, it comes to a place where a, pla a plane is crashed and you have been wounded badly. You see? For you to reach the hospital or to reach your home, it will force you again to use the same plane. You see? To go to the hospital or to go at home. Because you don't have any other option. If there be any other option, you won't use that plane because it has crashed you. But although the plane has crashed you, but you don't have any other option, you will just, you see on the road, cars, when cars crash, people die. Those who are wounded, other cars come, they put them in those cars, they are taken to hospital because there is no any other option. You see, if you reach to the level of understanding that God is the only option, then uh, Job is saying that even if the same God, uh, uh, even if the same God can come to a place that he is now uh, uh, wounding him or slaying him, he will continue to trust him. And verse 16, he says, he also shall be my salvation for a hypocrite could not come before him. So David says, uh, this Job says that he knows how God works. That even if it is God who has made all this to happen, it is the same God again who will give him salvation. He is the only option. One and only option. Can we come to that level, my brothers and sisters? Can we come to that level to trust God like Job? No matter what God will do in your life, no matter what God will not do, you want to be aggrieved with God. You want to be bitter with God. I remember the story of the, the, the man of God, John the Baptist, who prophesied and said, Jesus, the Son of God, the Lamb of God that taketh away the sins of the world, while he was in prison, he was offended a little bit, and he sent his disciples to go and ask Jesus, are you the one or should we wait? But Jesus said, go and tell him, and uh, tell him what you have seen. And what you have heard. And the final statement, what did Jesus say? Blessed is the one who is not offended by the Son of God. Which means, at times God may not do everything according to how we need it. And I think this is the half truth that the church has been told. Because the church will have been only told one side of the coin. God who blesses, God who raises, God who does everything good. But at times, God allows other things to happen. Paul said, a minister of the evil was sent into my life to torment me with a thorn in the flesh. I cried to God three times to heal me, but he told me my grace is sufficient. At times God will allow some things to happen for the glory and honor of his name. So we should not be offended by God. We should not put our trust in any other thing. That is why the psalmist says this. Look at what the psalmist is saying. I love this psalmist in Psalms chapter number 9. Psalms chapter number 9, the psalmist is talking something very unique. And I think this is what I want to address as uh, my major point as I conclude. Psalms chapter number 9, verse 10. The Bible says, And those who know your name will put their trust in you. For you, Lord, have not forsaken those who seek you. So it means you can only put your trust in God when you know God. And I think the only way of knowing God is through the revealed word. Because nobody knew God. I always tell people that the Bible is a book of revelation from Genesis to Revelation. Because look at the book of Genesis. When uh, Moses is writing Genesis, is many, many years after creation. Nobody was there when God was creating. So God is giving Moses revelation, what he did. And he chooses things that can help us understand the history of the creation, the fall of man, and what of you. That is revelation. Why is he revealing to us all those things? So that we can understand the whole story. He gives us laws. He teaches us his word. Jesus chooses the disciples 
and teaches them over a period of time. Then he tells them, go ye preach and teach, to, teach them to obey. So that which has been revealed, that is we, what we need, first of all, to understand and to know. That is the only way of knowing God. And after we have known God, we must be obedient to that God. Praise the Lord somebody. Okay? We must be obedient to that God. And the, the psalmist continues to say in Psalms 44, chapter, chapter 44, verse 6. Okay? I love what the psalmist is saying because this guy, most of it was, well, Psalms was written, most of it by people like David, by people like Moses and other great men who loved God. And chapter 44, verse 6, he's telling us, this psalmist uh, is telling us, for I will not trust in my, in my bow, nor shall my sword save me. I, I believe that is David. That is a psalm that was uh, written by David. He's saying, even though I am conquering battles, nations and kingdoms, I don't trust in my bow. The weapon that I am, not, I am using is not the secret of my success. Uh -uh. The stone that brought down Goliath, the power was not in the stone. The power was in the word. David told Goliath, you are coming to me with weapons, but I am coming you, to you by the name of the God of Israel. That name of the God of Israel, that name is the one that brought Goliath down. Not spears, not anything. So we can use people, God can use people. God can use battles. God can use money to help us reach certain levels. God can use academics, education, and everything. That we must reach a place to understand that that is just a tool that God used. It is God who gave us success. It is God who did everything for us. And that is why in chapter 49, verse 6, the same, same psalmist is saying something here so interesting again. Chapter uh, 49, verse 6. He says, uh, Fear took hold of them there, and the pain... Uh, no, 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 no. Chapter 49, verse 6. This is what the Bible... Those who trust in their wealth and boast in the multitude of their riches. You see? So, the service is saying there are people who trust in their wealth and they boast in the multitude of their riches. When some people have wealth, when they have money, when they have positions, they think that they are safe. And that one annoys God. That one offends God. So my brothers and my sisters, whether you have money, you have education, you have anything, the psalmist continues to say in Psalms 118, verse 8 and 9, that I will not trust in man, nor trust in princes. You can have some politicians, you know, some great people of this land that you know. When you trust them, they become an idol to you. When you trust money, it becomes an idol to you. When you trust a position, it becomes an idol to you. So it doesn't matter the position God has given. Let us trust God. And how do you trust God? First of all, know the promises of God. Know the word of God clearly. Read the Bible. And whatever the word of God says, believe it beyond reasonable doubt. Don't handle God according to your challenges, according to the things you are passing through, according to your success. Handle God according to his word. And as you do that, believe me, you will please God. And if you please God, he will fight for your battles, he will provide, and you will become a friend, knowing very well that when you are a friend of God, what happens? He say, Jesus said that he is going to prepare a place for us. And he shall come to, to take those who trust in him to live with him forever. So I am leaving you this question. What do you trust? Whom do you trust? Are you sure you trust God wholeheartedly, 100%, beyond the reason of the doubt, when things are in a mess? Do you still trust God or you don't trust God? Check on your heart. Make up your mind. And one of the things that I may conclude with, Jesus said in his last words, go into the whole world, preach the gospel to every creature. Whoever believes and baptized shall be saved. You who are hearing me wherever you are, 
Are you sure you are saved? Do you believe in the life of Christ Jesus, the perfect life of Jesus Christ? Do you believe in the death of Jesus Christ on the cross for our sins? And are you sure he rose from the dead and he's alive? Have you believed? Have you repented? And have you given your life to him? If you have not done that, you need to do it right now. In the mighty name of Jesus. My sister Blake, although I am preaching to the church that I am not seeing, but I just want to believe that there is somewhere, somebody somewhere hearing me. If you don't mind, allow me to lead somebody in a prayer of repentance. Wherever you are, if you are hearing me, Jesus said that there is no way you can enter the kingdom unless you are born the second time. You mm -hmm. must be baptized in water. You must be baptized by the Holy Spirit. You must repent of your sins. You must be somebody who believes in the death, resurrection, and ascens uh, the, the, the ascending of Jesus Christ. And he said he's alive on the right hand of the Father. He's coming back soon. My brother and my sister, wherever you are, if you have not received him, put your right hand on your chest and repeat these words after me. Say, Lord Jesus, I love you. I've heard your word. I've been convicted in my heart. I believe that Jesus, you died and rose again for my sins. Forgive my sins and everything that I have done. Wash me and cleanse me. Draw me near to you. Teach me to walk with you. Be mine and I be yours. Fill me with the Holy Spirit so that I can trust you. Thank you, Lord, for giving me the gift of, of salvation. In the name of Jesus, I pray and believe. Amen. Our Heavenly Father, King of Glory, Jehovah Yahweh, Daddy, I want to thank you because you are a good God. Thank you, Father, for what you have done to our listeners and our viewers wherever they are. May your word come out with the power, heal those who are sick, deliver those who are oppressed, bless those who are cursed, and turn around people's lives. Do them good, King of Glory. May your word continue, Father God, to bless them. Do good to their lives. Strengthen them, King of Glory, so that they can serve you in spirit and truth. We thank you and we honor you for this wonderful opportunity. Bless this station. Bless every viewer. Bless every person. Continue to bless me, King of Glory. Open more doors for your word. Thank you, Father, because you have done it. In the name of Jesus, we pray and we believe. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. And amen. amen. God bless you so much, my sister. Glory to amen. God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Thank you so much, Bishop Apondo. Thank you so much for unraveling the message in the song, glory to God, amen. And I wanna draw on um, what Job said, although he slay me, yet will I trust him. And I wanna provoke our thoughts with what you've said is, again, do we really trust him? In the hard times, in the difficult times, do we really trust him? And the test of this trust will really be when we're going through the difficult times, because when the things are going good, then you know we, we, we don't have to trust him like that but it's when we are at our last end of our rope that we're going to really realize if we really trust him so i trust we'll analyze our lives and we analyze our our walk and really check and see if we have trusted him like we say we do glory to god and when we don't trust him it grieves him so i trust that we will our trust in him will be heightened and we will trust him more in all that we're faced with and all that we're going through in this life. And I want to thank you so much for, you know, taking the time out for staying up late and, you know, bringing the word to us today. And I trust that someone who have heard this word um, or will be hearing the word even after this will have been led to come to trust him and come to know him. Glory to God, dear Lord and Savior. God bless you, man of God. May he continue to shine upon you. May he continue to give you peace. May he continue to extend your boundary as you continue to avail yourself to be used of him. God bless you so much. We much appreciate Amen. you and your family. God bless you. Amen. God bless you too. Amen. Amen. Have a good night. Have a good night. God bless. Wow. It is one o'clock there in um, Uganda, but Bishop Apondo has...
you know, made a sacrifice to bring us this word today. Will you trust him? And do you trust him? Amen. It's for us all to ask ourselves the question to really analyze and see in situations past if we have really trusted him and we resorted to other measures, amen, to do to um to fix what we think is happening. Amen. But I trust that we will trust him through the good times and the bad times, like Job, amen. Because when we come to the realization that we have no other resort, we have no other choice, amen, but to trust him. I trust that we we come to that um, understanding. Amen. Glory to God. God bless you, um, Bishop Oponda. Thank you so much for this wonderful word today. I want to say welcome to everyone who have joined us after the message began. Blessings to you, Minister Marie Bauman. God bless you. Blessings to you, and Brother Andre Revelation Singer. God bless you, Sean Cook. God bless you over there on the Facebook. Glory to God. Sister Stephanie Brown, God bless you. Welcome, everyone. Thank you for joining us. Mr. Douglas, God bless you. Sister Melanie, God bless you. Apple Abrams, God bless you. Welcome, everyone. Sister um, Auntie Julie, God bless you. Thank you for coming in, all of you that have come in. You know, this word was really, um, you know, it was a thought provoking, um, you know, um, thing because truly, our real test is to know if we really trust him when the times are bad, not when the times are good. You know, have we resorted to other things, or other measures, you know, when things don't seem to be happening the way that we want them to happen. Blessings to you, Minister Too Strong Reed. Amen. But may we trust him. Amen. He knows our end from our beginning. You know, Job was going through, you know, he was being badgered, he was being teased. You know, he had every reason to start doubting and start you know giving up on trusting god but he persevered through it all and i hope we can take that posture like job you know although he slay me yet will i trust him glory to god lord you know lord you see what i don't know and what i can't see so i will trust you job did not know that after all this that he's going through that the lord was going to restore everything back to him he could not even see or imagine what plans God had for him. But God knew that he could trust Job, amen, with this situation. And of course, his grace was sufficient for Job, amen. Sometimes we're going through and we're feeling like, you know, we can't hold out, but know that his grace is sufficient, amen, to keep us. Glory to God. Glory to God. We want to thank God today for the way he has led the man of God with the word, amen. And I um, mean, you know, I'm truly blessed by this word because it has left me that question you know in my day to day to ask myself you know do i trust him you know really when the test comes that's when we really going to understand or, or realize whether we truly truly trust him amen god bless you god bless you everyone thank you so much for joining us the track was lord you know lord you see and bishop upon the came to us out of kenya but you was currently in uganda uh, with the word today. So if you came in late and you missed the word, we want to encourage you to um, re-watch the program after um, we have signed out. Amen. We want to thank you for being here. Um, coming up next week, we have another speaker coming to us. Not fully confirmed as yet, but we will have someone coming to bring the word for us next week. Amen. Um, for those of you um, ministers who have songs, um, Mother's Day is coming up. Mama, I give you the roses now. Um, Special um, show is coming up in May, the second Thursday of May. Um, so if you got a Mother's Day song, you know, please reach out to me so you can be on that show. Amen. Or you got a, if you're an artist, if you got a, a com comedy, if you got a play, whatever you got, you know, it's we're just making a tribute to our mothers. Amen. And so that's going to be the Mother's Day show. Um, um, Gospel ministers coming up as well. It's in the works. Um, Sing my artist friend song. Amen. So that's a new show that we're adding um, to the program, and that's going to be happening in June. So we are um, selecting for that. You know, if you want to join us, it's going to be fun. Choose an artist, friend, sing their song. And we're talking about friends that are here on the social, not the big guys out there. All right. So it's going to be fun. I'm inviting you all to join us and, you know, chime in with this. It's going to be fun. So we want to thank God for the way He has led us. Um, coming up, of course, in the first week of May. It is Nurses Week. Um, I have a song for the nurses. And so, but I do, um, as, as, as much as we take care of our physical health as well as our spiritual health. So it's all about holistic care. And so um, we are bringing in a 
guest nurse to do some health teaching on that um, first um, Thursday of May. So stay tuned for the topic on that, but it's coming um, soon. Um, so we are in the works of that as well. Um, those of you who have not joined me on the Enrichment Gospel Hour on Monday mornings on Roots FM, tune in on 96.1 FM, or we're going to be back on Facebook next week, Monday at 9 a.m. Jamaica time and 10 a.m. Eastern. So if you're a gospel minister and you like to be on that program, you want to showcase your music ministry, reach out to me so we can make that happen. Amen. It's a time of spiritual enrichment. Yes. Tune into the Enrichment Gospel Hour every Monday at 9 a.m. Eastern with highly favored Blake as we strive to enrich your lives through music, prayer, and the inspired word of God. We also have live interviews with gospel ministers as they share their ministry. Tune into Roots 96.1 FM and Roots FM on YouTube and Facebook. Contact us at enrichmentgospel at gmail.com to promote your church event, businesses, and services. Tune in and be blessed. Yes, indeed. Tune in and be blessed. If I have missed you as you came in, I want to say welcome to those of you who have missed. Um, welcome to you, um, Brother Fitzroy Jackson. I see you there. Um, welcome to you. Amen. Today is Thursday and um, the Jamaican Gospel Show will be on at 8 o'clock. You can join Brother Danville over there on the Jamaican Gospel Show. Tomorrow evening, um, Sister Izzy will be on with her mom, Evangelist Melvina Thomas, at 5 p.m. on Izzy. Sister Izzy Thomas's YouTube and Facebook page. Um, Radical Praise is on tomorrow at 7 o'clock with DJ Apache Finger. Tune in and be blessed. On uh, Monday through Saturday, except for Wednesday, Pastor G is on on Caribbean Christian Broadcasting at 7.30 in the morning. You can join him there. Amen for a word. Amen. Glory to God. You can join Brother Fitzroy Jackson on Tuesday evenings for chat with the Jacksons, amen, for thought-provoking discussions, amen, as well. So their sister teacher is on at 7 p.m. on Tuesday with Faith Connection. You can join her over there on her page, um, Faith Connection, amen. Wednesday evenings, you have um, brother, brother Derek McFarlane on with um, his program, Chill and Chat, at, uh, I think it's 7 p.m., Amen. So tune into these programs and be blessed by the ministry. Amen. There's so much things on here that are distracting and not edifying. And so these are um, ministry partners that you can tune in and be blessed by their programs. Amen. Glory to God. We want to thank you all. Minister Too Strong Reen is currently um, not on, but he'll be back. Amen. And as soon as he's back, I'll tell you he's on Tuesdays as well. Amen. So we thank you all for joining us. We thank you all for joining us this afternoon. Amen. I trust you've been blessed by the word. We want to say thank you again to Bishop Oponda for bringing us the word today, bringing us the message in the song. Amen. I'm going to close up with the song, Lord, you know, Lord, you see. Remember, all these songs that you hear on the program are available on all your digital platforms. We also have um, the live, um, live <laughs> the hard copy CDs available and we can ship them to you wherever you are. Please do connect for your copy of the CDs. There are 40 some songs available for your musical um, delight. And there's a song almost for everything that you are celebrating. So go and look for that song, the birthday song, the Christmas song, the Easter song, the father's song, the mother's song. <laughs> All right, there's a song for almost everything that you're celebrating. So we trust that you will look for a song that appeals to you, whatever you're celebrating, amen. And of course, there's the Sacred Love Songs, two of them available as well right now. So we want to thank you for following. Thank you for supporting. For those of you who are on Facebook and YouTube, if you haven't liked the program as yet, please do like, and it's not too late for you to share the program out, all right? That somebody can be blessed. I trust that, you know, a soul will be saved through this ministry. I trust that. You know, as Christians, you know, we're going through this pilgrim's journey and there's times when we become, we become despondent. There's times when we, we become um, downcast. You know, and I trust that a word will encourage us, will uplift us, amen, will spur us along on the journey. The Bible says, iron sharpened iron, amen. And we thank God 
for the men and women who have availed themselves to come here and bring the word of God to us. Amen. Glory to God. So I want to thank you again for being here. Remember um, as well, you know, as you support the ministry, there's so many songs in the works. I got a lot of songs written that are yet to be um, finalized and, and published and released. But of course, we got to go back into studio. We got to spend and we got to re you know, replenish. So I trust that you can, if you can sow a seed, do appreciate it. But overall, I'd like for you to stream the songs, buy an album so that you will support us going back. Because of course, this program is Song and a Word. And the program is brought to you through the message in the song. And so we do. We need more songs to continue. Uh, we have gone around for the past four years, these 30 some odd songs, a um, couple of times, eh? amen. So um, we wanna bring the fresh songs in. They are in the works, a new album is, is pending, um, hopefully before um, the year end. Um, we'll have that release out. Praise in any language is coming out. Amen. This year, that's the Praise and Worship album. So we're looking forward um, to what the Lord um, is doing with that project. Amen. So again, Gospel Ministers, tune in, um, lock, keep me locked in with, um, you know, you, know, you want to be a part of the show coming up, sing my artist friend song. And also, um, if you get a Mother's Day song, you want to perform on the Mother's Day show, please reach out to me to be on the Mother's Day show as well. Amen. So uh, we're signing out for now. Amen. And we thank you all for joining us. God bless and keep you. May his face continue to shine upon you and give you peace. Until next week, same time, same place. It's your girl, Holly Favorite Blake. And we are signing out with Lord you know, Lord you see. Amen. Order my steps, Lord.
He broke off the engagement And left your heart broken into No to trust And to lead you And just trust Him To stare you 